Welcome to the Pet Loss Companion broadcast. I'm Ken Dolan Del Vecchio, and I'm here with my friend and colleague and co-author, Nancy Saxton Lopez. And this is a weekly broadcast that we do on YouTube and on Anchor and other podcast outlets that brings the knowledge that we gained over decades of leading pet loss support groups, knowledge that we brought into our book, The Pet Loss Companion, Healing Advice from Family Therapists Who Lead Pet Loss Groups. And we use this opportunity to share it with a wider audience. So if you're with us live, please feel free to give us your comments and questions and actually see if you can put up your pictures because today we're going to be sharing a number of photos of our own that are examples of memorials and ways mm -hmm. that we remember. So Nancy, take it away. Yeah, we're we're going to talk about memorials, and when we talk about me memorials, sometimes that means a ritual too. So there's yeah. there, they kind of they kind of go together, and um, so um, a lot of times what people are doing now is to have a memorial service. Okay, there are um, uh, pet cemeteries. There are um, yeah, even pet um, um, funeral homes. If you you know that you can utilize, um, I will have one picture of my Rosie that's at uh, uh, the Abbey Glen where we go um, before she was uh, cremated. Um, but it's it's important if you're going to do a memorial service that you certainly can plan it. If that's in response to you know honoring the one the loved one that has died. So you could a place and time, who to invite, um, the layout of the service. People can do readings or they can have music or, or poems can be can be shared or stories. Um, sometimes people do have the body. You know, you know, it's like a human funeral, and um, that is usually done at at a um, at a um, pet you know cemetery uh, facility, but it doesn't have to be, I don't think, um, or with the cremains. And then you could have a card. I mean, we had a person that came into the group that had a mass card made. Mm -hmm. you know, from for her animal, and in fact, but it went viral not that long ago was a person who were family who owned a funeral home and they had a funeral for their pug and it, it was laid out and, and, and advertised just like it would be for a, for a human. Yep. And, it, and it went viral. It was quite a few people, you know, uh, watched that. Um, so you can also ask for a donation if you'd like for an animal charity, um, if people would like to do that. So, I mean, that's part of the memorial services. So Pardon. do you want me to share some of your photos? Yeah. Nancy, so you talked about a funeral. Yep, there, so maybe you can describe this. And we brought the flowers. We always bring flowers, you know, and we put usually roses and we adorn her, you know, before she has her final uh, uh, travel. Um, and it's a beautiful place. Um, and so we get some time to spend with, with, with all of our dogs that we've had at Abbey Glen. And so that's, that is, you know, what we do. It's kind of a ritual for us um, yeah. to bring the flowers and to spend some time. So I'm going to show some other images and you can describe what, what okay. they show. Now, this is kind of interesting. This is my mantle, actually, and my daughter, my actually two-letted daughter, my, she never had an issue with this, but as you see, it's all dogs. Um, and I wanted to, to talk about, it's really important if you can, during the lifetime of your animal, cat, dog, horse, you know, gerbil, um, mm -hmm. to take some pictures. Because now that large picture with our four pugs and Ellie, our Frenchie, three of them have died. And so now it's really nice to have, they're still all together in our home, you know, in, in this large picture, which is yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And this, this is my little Hank. This was my heart dog and he died in 2019. And a way that you can memorialize them is this is a portrait and it's a, it's a artist in Canada who does miniature um, 
uh, portraits. And if you want, I had it written down somewhere, but I don't know where I put it. Um, it's Annalise, somebody, Carlucci, I think her name is. And I'm having Molly and Rosie done now, but this is little Hank. And I think it's, it's just perfect. It looks just like him. So if you send me the contact information, yeah, I'll, I'll send I it. promise to put it on the information that that is attached to this email on YouTube or attached okay. to this video on YouTube, I should say. I will do that. And now, now we have the uh, piano that um, has seven little teapots. Um, these are all of our beloved that have died over the years, starting back in 1989. So, um, we, I have a teapot for each one that kind of fits their personality and some pictures. And so this is Fred's um, on the right. And the funky, cool little teapot is for Lulu. <laughs> okay. And this is my Hank. So you can, you can see my little heart dog that I have a portrait of Hank and myself. <laughs> and <laughs> And his his and now Hank had one of his toes removed. So this and actually this is a, something I didn't think about until I just saw this. But he, that little paw print is going to be a tattoo on my arm as soon as I can get to a tattoo parlor. But <laughs> but that that he only had three little 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 toes. What um, happened? Why did he have? Well, part of his. Part of his illness, you know, we had so many illnesses. He had diabetes and he had epilepsy and he had anemia. And so there was a fungus, you know, that I guess popped up on one toe. And so he had to have it removed. But his little teapot there is yellow because he was my sunshine. <laughs> That's great. That's great. So, and now all oh, these are the, you know, this is the most recent, you know, the rose, um, the roses on the teapot, that is for our Rosie. Um, she died last year. Um, that was mama. And uh, Molly just died. We talked about Molly, you know, about a month ago, a month and a half ago. And so, of course, it was apropos to have a rose teapot for Rosie. But Molly's nickname was Kitten Tongue. So, cause she had a little kitten face. And so I found a black cat teapot. And so I, mean, I wish I didn't have time to get two pictures done, but I wanted to share this, this, you know, tonight. So that's, that's the two of them together. And I think there's one more. Yes. Okay. And now uh, this is my first pug was Tashi and she's on the left. And she had a Villaroy and Bach tea, uh, teapot. She was our fabulous first lady. <laughs> she was just fabulous. <laughs> and Noelle, who's on, on the right, I'm sorry, I said, uh, uh, Tashi was on the left, but she's uh, uh, on the left. But um, Noelle's on the right. And she was the grand dame. So <laughs> he has a very um, English, you know, kind of Delft uh, teapot there. And so, and, and I just love, look, I mean, they, they're all home with us, right? They're all home yeah. and we all yep. have the pictures. Um, yep. And so my whole piano is, is um, filled with our love and, and their, their, uh, their little, you know, spirits, you know. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> and so, so thoughtful. It's just so thoughtful. Yeah. Either, you know, when they had collars, I mean, now pugs and Frenchies have, you know, more, they're, it's easier to have harnesses for them because of their breed, you know, characteristics. But, you know, I have the, you know, the, the collars. Um, there was a woman, there was a cross there. A woman actually made that for me. And it has her name on it and dates, you know. So, but th those are the teapots. Um, and then I think, Ken, you have the one with all the little paw prints. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here we go. And yep. there are all the little paw prints. Um, I don't have paw prints for the older, um, you know, uh, pets, you know, older dogs because they didn't weren't doing them back then. So, but there are some of them, um, and and they're just nice to have be, be uh, there for us, and they're home with us, and that yeah. makes it, it makes it wonderful. Now, the other thing, Ken, and I had to even take pictures of this, as I told you that we started a memorial garden in the back, so I really don't have pictures because it's not done yet. But I did order little rocks, rocks 
that are about eight inches by about four inches, and they're going to be engraved with their names, their first names, and then they'll have the dates, and it will be um, a kind of a nickname, and then forever in our hearts. And so we will put those around through the garden, and, uh, and, and the bird bath just came today. So I will put the bird bath in too. And so we'll have a nice little garden. And that's something else that people do, right? Plant trees, you know, plant flowers, plant bushes, you know, make, they make a, a garden with, you know, you know, you could have a bench, you could have rocks. I mean, one man, uh, you know, I think of the group had redone his entire backyard, you know, yeah. and he had this very special place, right? He had a rock wall and he had a bench and he had a little plaque and he had some beautiful flowers. So that is something that is a lot of people would like to do. In fact, I had two dogwoods uh, for Noel and Tashi, but over 20 years, unfortunately, one of them died. So um, we had to replace it. But that's something that a lot of people do, you know, that they yeah. have something in the back of their home. Yeah. Uh, or I have a client that goes to Maine um, every year and puts flowers um, and a wreath depending on the season, she'll go up a few times. And that was for her dog and her husband. Mm, now mm -hmm. they, they, they travel to Maine every year. And yeah. so you, that's something else to do. And people do scatter ashes. Yep. So yep. that's a ritual. Um, yeah. So those are all the kind of more the outdoor memorial rituals. So. And this is, so you're talking about a garden. This is ah. the grave for, my cat diana so she's buried right underneath this this is a stand of coreopsis which are perennial and which will be blooming before too long so i took this picture today but it's very simple and i tend to be very invested in doing things outside and growing all kinds of different plants and and fruit trees and berry bushes and whatnot but this is this is essentially underneath a plum tree Oh, and so cool. it's ringed by some rocks and she is there. She's underneath a few feet down and has been there for about two and a half or three years. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. So that's the way, I, that's the way we, mm -hmm. well, we do different things actually. We do different things. So that's one of the memorials that we have. We have a garden spot that has lilies in it and one of our dogs was named Lily. And so we consider that to be her. a memorial for her as well. And so here's more of the formal things that we have. And you probably can't see this too well, but one of the wooden cases has the ashes, has Jack's ashes. It says on it, we love you, Jack. And it has the, his birth and, and death days. And then the other one is, lit, is for Lily. And Lily was a tiny two and a half pound chihuahua. Oh my God. And so she, oh. she there's not, there wasn't much to her when it came to the ashes. And so we have this little wooden box and that has her dates. And actually the little, the little ceramic box has a tuft of Lily's hair uh, and a, a photograph of her. And so that's what's inside of there. And we have these on our hutch. Usually I put them on a table to just take the picture, but they're usually right there in our dining room. And they're always present in that way. Oh, that's beautiful. They're very, very nice. I do different, we do different things. And, you know, we've, we've lived in this house for several years, but we've also lost pets before we, before we lived in this house. And ten, I tend mostly to bury them outside. That's what I've done generally. Now with our chihuahuas, I think we, because they live so close to us mm -hmm. and they spend most of their time inside, it makes, I guess it makes more sense to us to, have to them. have them cremated and keep them inside. My cats tend to be buried. My cats and rabbits tend to be outside. Well, where, yeah. where are the rabbits? The rabbits, I just had them. I had the vet dispose of them, actually. I didn't really feel a need to do that with all of them. And and so there there have been others that I've buried in previous at previous residences. But, you know, different different times when an animal dies, it feels different. And if it's in the winter... Oh yeah, and, you know, sometimes it's difficult to bury in the winter. Kind of depends. I mean, my spirituality in general tells me that 
they're not that their physical remains are not of great consequence and that their spirit is what spirit. matters so right. and it, it and different losses feel different to feel differently mm -hmm. too so. well right like we talked about i you know you can all you can have a multitude of animals and love them all but mm -hmm. there's one or two in your lifetime. Tashi was my first hard dog. I mean, she was yeah. my first pug. And, you know, and I went through a, a little bit of difficulty in the context that I was getting divorced and I was moving and I couldn't have a dog. And my, my ex-husband had the dog and had Tashi and it was, it was really problematic. And we were, I was going back and getting her every weekend. Um, and so uh, eventually I was able to, I was able to have Tashi, um, and she went through a lot of life with me. Um, but Hank, Hank also has been my little guy, my little man. Yeah. I, we tend to leave, well, we live, we've lived in a lot of different residences over many, many years. And so we left Reginald and Phoebe at our home in Bud Lake, New Jersey. Yeah. They were both buried outside. And uh, and we've left a number of pets that we had during my son's early childhood years buried in the backyard of the home that his mom lived in. And we would do little rituals for each of, of them. Course. And we would read cards and, and on one occasion they'll release balloons and all that kind of stuff. That's Always neat. put a flower in the yeah. grave. Yeah, and, and I think Tweety and Henry are here. Are they real? Yeah, they're they're here in front of the house in a, in a little space. Yes, <laughs> they're always close at hand in one yeah. way or another. <laughs> but that's the thing. Remember the movie uh, Marley? Something about Marley. Yeah. And that was so poignant at the end of the movie when I think it was Jennifer Aniston and Owen Wilson, right? Mm -hmm. And she had had this issue with the dog in some ways, and then they had the two kids and whatever. And when Marley died she realized how important that dog had been. And so they went out in the front. It was, I think it was the front yard it looked like. And he, he dug, dug the grave and they put, um, uh, you know, Marley in there. And then all of the kids had something to read. Yeah. yeah. And she took the necklace that she had had off of her and she put it in the grave with Marley. And so, and, and, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we do. The, it's important to do rituals, actually, if you can, you know, yeah. because it's sometimes, uh, sometimes digging the grave is a is almost like a way to release energy. Right. It seems to me, and it's it's a way to to honor them by creating a place. To me, it's to me putting a body back in the earth is deeply spiritual. Yeah. Right. And so, I mean, I tell Tim, I want to be composted. I tell my husband, that's what I want to do. And in fact, there are now places, I believe in the state of Oregon that do that. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. It's like, a, it's a structure that's like this huge silo, you might say, and you put the body in at the top and cover it with wood chips and you just keep adding bodies and wood chips and then at the bottom, you're getting you're getting finished compost. Right, that's fascinating. And, and it's, I think it's great. I think it's really great. Oh, it does to dust, right? Isn't yeah, it? yeah. And so the way, but it, you know, whatever your spirituality tells exactly. you is the appropriate way to go. That's the way to go. That's right. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I, I, I tell Tim if that's too expensive or we can't do it, just scatter my ashes here. Because yeah, right. I love and, this place. And I'm really connected to it. I do a, spend a lot of my time working on it. <laughs> it, and, it and that's where you want to be. Now, yeah. the other thing for people, if you're going to bury your animal, you, I mean, New Jersey, supposedly you're not allowed to bury animals, but everyone does. Um, <laughs> so well, I don't think they're going to come and get me. But but you may want to check, you know, wherever you are, if that is really an issue or not. Yeah. Um, and so, you may not care if it's. That's right. <laughs> I've no. left a number of bodies in New Jersey. <laughs> right. <I'm afraid>. right. <laughs> and I don't think, I don't think really anyone has ever really said anything about it, but supposedly that's what it is. But, you, but in different states may have different, they, they may be more stringent with rules so, or different countries. You know, we don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but there were there are other things that that you know I 
got together because we're talking about rituals and, and memorials. And mm -hmm. a lot of times what people do is creative. All right. So photo albums, uh, scrapbooks, yeah. portraits, you know, you can do your own portrait. Sure. Or you can have a portrait made like I had Hanks made. Um, shadow boxes are interesting because you can literally put three dimensional things in, in the shadow box. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, the a, a, a item of clothing, the harness or the, or the collar, or, you know, a toy. So that could be interesting. Sometimes people create little lockets. Oh, yeah. Right. Hair or ashes or a tiny little photo. Yes. And carry that on them, you know, wear it so that exactly. it's close to your heart. They actually have urns now that you can buy, little urns, like they're little amulets or something, and then you can put ashes in them and wear them. The other thing is it's become really, I mean, it's been somewhat popular, I guess, is you can actually send your ashes places and they will make a stone out oh. of the ashes. Mm -hmm. So now it's not, it's not, it's cheap. It's not cheap. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a few thousand dollars up, but you you can pick the color of the stone, and it can be a ring or it can be a pendant. Um, but it takes a period of time, you know, mm -hmm. um, for the ashes to be able to be formed into some kind of stone. Um, but there are also you can put ashes in, you know, like glassware, you know, like a like like you know something like that. You know, what where are you? Um, you know, something some kind of uh, paperweight or something you could put ashes in. Um, or also, I think that there's, there's other things, pottery maybe. So, so that's something that, that can be done. Also. Lots and lots, lots and lots of options. And uh, people will create all kinds of scrapbooks and some people will write poetry. Yeah. Some people will write songs. Yeah. They'll do right. all kinds of things, create a memorial video. Exactly. A lot of a lot of online things now. Of course, mm -hmm. there are websites. Uh, one is the one is grieving pet loss, I think. Um, and a lot of people will post, you know, uh, what happened to their animal, and you know, and they will show the pictures of the urns or whatever, and and talk about their loss. Um, and so Facebook has has quite a few of them. I'm sure. I, I may Instagram may. I'm not sure. Um, but sometimes that's really helpful. Um, and so there are actual sites about cat grieving, you know, that you can, you can post on, but people also can do, um, you know, they, they we had a, a person who had a guitar. Remember that? I don't know if kind of you were with, you were when the guy had the guitar and he, he made guitars and he painted a, his dachshund on his guitar. No, I don't remember yeah. that. That's, yeah. Wow. That takes yeah. some real skill. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, and that's what he did for a living, right? So um, you could create a dance or a play. I mean, you could paint on clothing. You could, you know, paint tiles. You get the tiles now in rocks. It's really, you know, yeah. crafty now to to do yeah. that, to paint. Um, I was going to do that initially, but um, but I decided to actually, you know, get some rocks that were that were going to be uh, etched. Um, but there's, there's quite a few. Oh, so lighting candles, you know, a lot of people mm -hmm. like candles. Mm -hmm. You could light candles at a certain time of day, every day, or mm -hmm. you could just do them for birthdays or anniversaries where mm -hmm. you have some meditative time to remember your loved one. Um, you could write a letter to them. You Which know. we always do actually. We yeah. tend to do that as part of our ritual. Yep. Yep. Um, create an altar. Some people have had an altar. Many people who came to the meeting had yeah. what they described as an altar. And in some cases, it was absolutely devoted to their pet's memory. And one person told me that she had created a stone altar. And other times it was either a little table that had served some other purpose or it was in one person was talking about their altar being a, a part of their dresser where they had the ashes and kind of like what, what you've got in some of your pictures there, the, the dog's collar and maybe their tags, a favorite toy, those kinds of things. Yeah. I mean, and I don't think that there's too many other ones while well, visiting the grave, obviously, if you have, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people will go up to the pet cemeteries and they will visit their, their, their loved ones. Um, but it doesn't matter what you do 
and it doesn't matter how many times you do it. Well, you do it to you do it as feels fit for mm -hmm. you. That's the whole that's the whole point, and that can be different, very different for different people. It can be very different for different losses, mm -hmm. and it's just you do what you need to do, and what will help you to feel like you're on a healing path is the way I think about it. Right. And so all any of these things. Um, now there's also, you can do uh, memorials online. I think it's petloss.net. Uh, pet there's two pet loss websites, petloss.com. One's got a pet loss net. But if you put in pet loss, all of these things. Are oh, there's lots of, lots yeah. of options. Yeah. Um, the APLP yeah. Association for Pet Loss and Bereavement. And so you can literally put memorials online if you would like. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, actually, um, um, sometimes the, I, I don't know if they do it at the pet cemeteries if they do that, but there are other kind of organizations that you can also do memorials. Um, so, and then you can just chat, you know, with people if you need to. I mean, for a lot of people out in rural areas or areas that don't, you know, have a lot of, of uh, you know, supports, you know, it's nice to talk to someone. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. So communicating via wh whatever technology is also, if you can't do it face to face, and increasingly we can be together face to face, which is very nice. You can do it on via phone or on email or text or whatever way is available to you. It's important to get to get the supports that you need during this yep. time. Yep. Again, I mean, you know, it doesn't matter how many times that you do a ritual. And it doesn't matter how many times you memorialize your animal. You know, it's it's really what's what you need. Yep. Like Ken said, you know, what you need to do. Yep. Yep. So I guess we can we can wrap up for this mm -hmm. this time and again just reinforce that we are happy to receive your images as well, <laughs> receive your stories, and we'll we'll share them on the Facebook page. And we just uh, again, express our condolences for those of you who have had recent losses or are facing mm -hmm. anniversary times or, or just having a hard time. Yeah. And whatever you, we want to help you in any way we can. So whatever questions you have or thoughts you have or comments, please let us know and we'll try to address them. See you soon, Nancy. <laughs>